What is up everybody? I'm Joseph, your Web3 instructor. And in this Morales tutorial, I will show you how you can get the reserves of the two tokens of a token pair address. Now, in a previous video that I will link in the description below, I have already showed you how you can get the token pair address of the two tokens on a decentralized exchange. So if you haven't checked that video out already, make sure you do that first. Now, back to the topic. A uh, token pair reserve is a pool of assets and that serves as kind of a bridge and that can be useful for facilitating trades between two assets that otherwise might not be easily exchangeable. So to demonstrate this, we're going to use this endpoint right here, the get pair reserves. But in order for us to test this out, we need to get the pair address from somewhere. So that's why we're going to use the get pair address endpoint first which is the one we used in the video I have linked below. So let's take the addresses for Uniswap and also for USDT and paste those in right here. Try it out. And here we're getting the data for each token, but also the pair address, which is the one we're interested in in this case. Now we're going to paste that in right here. And then we can use the other parameters as well. We're using chain as always, but by default, if you're not using the chain parameter, it's gonna be Ethereum. So once we try this out, we see that we get the response for the two reserves. I have created this application right here and we can try it out here as well. And if we choose Ethereum and hit submit, we can see that we're getting the reserves back in their own currencies. So that's pretty cool to create. Let's jump into the documentation and the code and I will show you how you can build this app. All right, so inside Visual Studio Code, I have created this get dex token reserves folder that will act as a root folder for my project. And within this one, I have the backend and the frontend folder as always to separate those two. Let's start with backend. And I have installed four dependencies that you can see right here. It's the Morales, the Express, the .env and also course. And I have created a .env variable for us to add our API key right there instead of using it uh, upfront in our index.js file. Now, if you don't have an API key yet, make sure you go to morales.io to create your free account, log in to your admin dashboard, and then go to Web3 APIs to find your API key. Now we want to keep this private and that's why we can copy it from here and use it in our EMV file. So I've pasted it in here already. And if we go to index.js, I can require the .env library and then get my EMV variable from here and store it in this variable. And then I can use it inside my application. Now we have required the other libraries as well. We're using an express server on port 5001 and we need cores because we're going to get data from the, our front end client and then we're going to use that data and make the API requests. Before we do that, we need to use the start function that's provided by Morales along with our API key. And then we are also start listening to our server so we know that it is up and running without any issues. Now, this server has one endpoint and it's a get endpoint on get pair reserves. So when our front end client uh, makes a request towards this endpoint, it's gonna pass along two parameters, uh, the pair address and the chain ID. And we're gonna use those to do a request to the get pair reserves endpoint. Once we get the response back, we're gonna send it to the front end client and display that on our UI. Our frontend is a Next.js application, so make sure you create that and then install Axios and React Select. So we have our homepage of the app, which is index.js, and that holds two components, the header, which is the title and the logo, and then the main component, which is where we have our form and the result section. So let's go into main.js and we can see that we are importing both Axios and React Select. Now React Select, we need that to create beautiful and simple drop-down menus like so. So we're adding three networks, Ethereum, Guerli, and Mumbai, and we need each hex 
uh, value of the respective chain ID. Now we've added some styling to our drop down menu to keep it simple and clean. And once you click the drop down menu and choose your preferred chain, we're going to store that value in the set chain value right here. And once we click the submit button, we're going to run this function right here and get the value of the pair address from the input field and also the hex chain ID from the variable above. And we're going to send those to the backend server when we do this request to our server on 5001 and to the slash get pair reserves endpoint. Once we get the response back, I will console log it so you can see how it looks like in full. But what we have taken out is each reserve of these two tokens. And that's by doing reserves or response dot data dot reserve zero and reserve one for the second one. Then we want to empty the input field and the drop down menu to make it look clean. And below this form that we are rendering right here, we have the result section. And there we're just displaying the amount for reserve zero and reserve one in respective currency. So they both have different decimals. Uh, Uniswap has 18 and USDT has 6. And you can get this by searching on respective um, token in Etherscan. So right here you can see that Uniswap has 18 and USDT has 6. And that's what we're getting back. So if I open the inspector console, you can see the response is an object that looks like this. And we're getting data and reserve zero and reserve one for the respective reserves and then with our formatting we can make it look like this instead that's it i hope you enjoyed this video it's pretty simple and with just a few lines of code you can get the token pair address and then also the token pair reserves for the two tokens if you have any questions or any troubles make sure you post them in the comment section below otherwise i hope i will see you in the next video